Good morning. It's the Celtic briefing on the 23rd of July 2021. The final pre-season friendly is coming up against West Ham tomorrow and Alison McConnell and I, Andy Barge, will take a quick look ahead to it, um, which is immediately preceding the more important tie, the away leg of the Champions League qualifier against Michelin. So important for Celtic that they get through this match unscathed tomorrow, Alison. The centre-back situation is slightly delicate now. Christopher Julian is unfit. Carl Starfelt is quarantining. And that means that Stephen Welsh and Dane Murray are probably in line to play, given that uh, Nier Baton was sent off uh, in the first leg. Urugide, um still, I think, getting up to speed with, with being in the club, but he's another option. How do you see things in that regard? It's bizarre, isn't it? I think... Uh... I had said in a piece earlier today that it's just of all the headaches that you think you're going to have going to a new club. I think throwing in two kids for a pre-season friendly game wouldn't wouldn't really be up there in the list of headaches that you think you're going to have. But but given the the magnitude of the game next week over in Denmark and the fact that if if either of these boys gets injured, you have an absolute nightmare uh, in terms of selection. And, and I think that it goes back to the the whole issue with near beat on and the 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 real the ripple effect of one moment of madness. It, it doesn't just affect the team for that game. It's now a, a real handicap at this stage going into the second leg, particularly when the the, the tie is just so precarious and so finely balanced. Uh, I I don't think it's ideal at all what they're going in with. I think the, the, the it's exposed just how threadbare the squad is. Um, but I think the likelihood is that he will go with, with, with Murray and, and Welsh and give them an opportunity to play together. I think and on the balance of options that you have, I think it, it probably makes sense to play them, but I think you might be, be watching through splayed fingers at points tomorrow. Yeah, the, the issue here isn't that Welsh and Murray are the likely two to play against Michelin, it's that they're the likely two to play against West Ham and that they can't be wrapped in cotton wool and kept safe unless Postacoglu just completely threw all sense out the window and, and played two people at, at centre half that just do not play there just to just to keep the boys safe. Yeah, it's another option if you've got some versatility. The problem is I'm not just I'm not entirely sure where that would come from at the minute. At, at, at first glance from the score, I mean you think back to, to decades ago and Martin O'Neill could maybe throw Chris Sutton in at the back for for problems. It was a solution at times when there were headaches defensively that you had a, a presence there. Um, I'm just not sure that kind of versatility exists at the minute in terms of being able to rotate the squad and, and have people playing out of position. I'm just uh, I'm not sure that the option is there to do it. Furthermore, I think it might make sense for the the two boys for, for Murray and Wales just to have some game time together and just to try and establish the, the loosest of partnerships uh, ahead of what's a, a massive game next week. Mick Nolan here mm -hmm. saying that Leo Hilda is another option. That's a fair point. I wonder if he might get, get a run out against West Ham. He's he's not really um, had too much football. He's only a young boy. I think he's actually still 17, 18 years, years old. He might, he might be 18 now. Um, but he was well thought of at Ross County in his loan yeah. spell last season. Um, yeah, a, a pre-season friendly against West Ham will do no harm. I saw him a few times actually last season. I covered a couple of Ross County's games and, and I saw him. I uh, saw him at Ibrox a, a game. I think he, he's still quite raw, but he is an option. I think for the likes of tomorrow's game, I think he, he would definitely come under consideration. Uh, I, I think it, 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 it's a name that goes into the mix. Uh, and I think it'll, it'll be something that Postecoglou maybe gives a bit of thought to. However, my my gut feeling is he will go largely with a team that will play over in Denmark. When Starfelt and Julian are available and with Welsh there as well, that this this really isn't too much of an issue. But Celtic are still seemingly looking to add another name from the outside in, and that's Ko Itakura from Man City, 23, 24 year old Japanese player. He's been spent the last two years at FC Groningen, which is the club where Celtic bought. Virgil van Dijk from. I think it would just be a loan deal from, from Man City. There's a prior relationship with the club. Things seem to run fairly smoothly in that regard. Do you know much about that, Alison? I can't say I do at the minute, but um, I'm not sure we would have a pre-season without Celtic being linked with a Man City loan player. 
Um, but yeah, as you've just touched on there, there's a, an existing relationship between the two clubs. It's been fairly successful. I think if you go through the players that have come in throughout the years, Jason Denier and Patrick Roberts and and so on and so forth, I think they're, 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 it's been a mixed bag at times, but um, I think if there's an opportunity to bring someone else in and you think he fits the mould of how the manager wants to play and finances are right, then I don't think it would do Celtic any harm at all to have more options because I think that the lack of defensive stability it was just undermined everything that the, the team tried to do last season. I think the defensive frailty just made made it very, very difficult in terms of the consistency and weak performances. And I think the, the entire back line could do with as much help as it can get. Well, those links aren't going away with Itakura. Another transfer link that I would align similarly to that is Fraser Forster every summer. Um, he's saying it wouldn't be a Celtic transfer window unless they were linked with a Man City loanee. It wouldn't be a Celtic transfer window unless they were linked with a return for Fraser Forster. Um, I think that the, 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 the well-known angle of this is that the wage cut would need to be pretty enormous if Celtic were to bring him in uh, on a reg on a on a permanent basis. But I, I'm not too sure where he fits in the Southampton standings at the moment and in the pecking order. Celtic have an expensive goalie at the club already. It, it's it's not really working out as it stands, but that could change. Do you think that this is something that has a bit of mileage? Fraser Forster coming back again. We could have been sitting having this conversation 12 months ago, couldn't we? Talking about finances and, and how difficult it would be for the club to do that deal. I, I have to confess that um, I'm not entirely convinced by it. I, I'm not sure that there's too much traction in the story. Um, I could be wrong. I'm, I, it's just a gut feeling. Um, I just think that uh, there have been opportunities for Fraser Foster to be a Celtic player and it's not materialised through one thing or another. And I'm not sure that there has been a significant shift on either side that would uh, that would facilitate a permanent move now. Um, I'm not sure that another loan option would come into consideration either. But Stranger things have happened. I think um, maybe if there's an opportunity to come and play first team football, but, but I think what the story does reveal is the fact that Celtic quite clearly still feel as though they need to bring in another goalkeeper. That there is a, a headache around that particular position. It's uh, and it's not been solved. And I think uh, I think you could yet see someone else come in in that position. Is that transfer link with Forster? Just born out of familiarity, really, more than anything else. I think that's too simplistic to say. I think um, I think there's there's lots of things that affect transfer stories and transfer speculation. There, there there's lots of things that go on underneath the surface. Um, I'm just not entirely sure that things would have changed so substantially to make it happen now. Okay, what's the situation with Hugo Firahashi? He is now in the country and think he's ready to, to get going. Does he need to quarantine for a period of time or when will he be available to play for Celtic? I'm not entirely sure where he is, if he's in London or if he is up in Glasgow. I think there might be different quarantine rules depending on what part of the country he's in. But I would be surprised if we, we saw him before Tynecastle on, on the opening game of the season. I think he'll have to come in and quarantine. I don't know. The only good thing that you would say is that he should be relatively fit. Last Saturday, he'd signed off by, by playing and by scoring before he made his move over to Celtic. So he's obviously not having to play catch-up in terms of a pre-season and coming in having not played for, for a number of weeks. He is fit. He's match fit. Uh, and the fortnight or whatever it is round about it in terms of of having to quarantine shouldn't adversely affect his match fitness too much. It's not going to be that you'll need a substantial block of time to get up to the same level of fitness as the rest of the squad. So what you could say is that when he's fit and when he's available, he should be able to go into the team pretty seamlessly. Is that is that sometimes overthought, do you think? Remember when Scott Sinclair made his debut at Tyne Castle? He'd signed for Celtic a matter of hours, literally before it. He'd barely met his teammates and he came off the bench and scored the winner. So sometimes the, the deep end is, is no bad thing. Yeah, I think sometimes it can give everyone a lift. I think sometimes if you, you bring someone in and they come on, it, it, it's some fresh blood. I think that if you, when 
you're in a situation where you've got a full support and a full stadium I think it can just give everyone a bit of energy I think uh, I think fans in particular are always keen to get a look at new signings and I think that works both ways I think if you're walking on to a reception like that you, you've maybe got an extra spring in your step but yeah, I think uh, I think too. Sometimes players are itching just to get started to go out. You start with a badder. I think if you come in and you score early on in in your career, I think it facilitates a an element of settling quickly. I think uh, I think it can help in terms of that process. But as we know just now, just the, the way the world is, that things are further complicated by the the bureaucracy around COVID restrictions, and I think it makes that quite difficult to do, to have an immediate player just come in and, and be introduced to the squad. Ryan Christie played really well the other night, despite the continual transfer links surrounding him. Alton Edwards, I think it's kind of maybe, not split opinion, but certainly causing debate about his performance. But personally, I thought he, he was not bad. I thought he had a pretty good game. I think the, 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 the likelihood is that both of them will still leave, especially given their contract situations. Yeah, they'll play against Michelin, though, I'm sure. So do you expect those two to be rested against West Ham in case of injury in a, in a much less important game and then just play them in the when it matters? It's a possibility. I have to say, I think it might be the, the team who starts over over in Denmark that plays tomorrow. I'm not sure, but I, I just think maybe there's a there will be it will be seen as an opportunity to get game game time and, and match fitness into the legs of the players uh, and just maybe work on a few things ahead of going out for the second leg. It's pure supposition, I don't know. It might You might be right, there might be a, an element of just trying to preserve people for fear of any any injury issues, but I think not, I don't think everyone will play the full game tomorrow, but I think they might all get some game time, particularly those who start, particularly those who are going to start, sorry, over in, in Denmark. Great. Well, I think that wraps us up for this morning, Alison. Thank you very much for joining us on the, the morning briefing and we'll see how Celtic get on uh, against Premier League opposition. Thanks very much and, and thanks for accommodating my domestic commitments around an earlier time today. Thank you. <laughs>